Welcome to the Uncomplicating Weight Loss Podcast. My name is Eva Rodriguez, proud Latina, single mom, and certified integrative nutrition, health, weight loss, and mindfulness coach. I'm passionate about teaching women how to balance being busy and healthy without complicated rules or restrictions. On this podcast, I'll be simplifying weight loss concepts and mindset shifts so that you can be confident in your curves. It won't always be easy, but it doesn't have to be complicated. On today's episode of Uncomplicating Weight Loss, I'm going to give you an introduction to intuitive eating, which is basically a form of mindful eating that I personally live by and that I really enjoy teaching and I really enjoy coaching my clients on, especially those that have never heard of it because they're like, what the fuck is this? And um, and it's actually a lot of fun to do. And it really ties in with everything that I believe in and, and all the, the things like the main pillars that I teach on, which are self-care, self-love, mindfulness. They all line up really beautifully with intuitive eating. So I'm going to be uncomplicating intuitive eating today. Now, I learned about intuitive eating while I was studying for my emotional eating psychology certification. And it just made a lot of sense to me because I'm naturally intuitive. I'm also an empath. It's another story for another day, but I, I didn't always love the fact that I was very intuitive and I can feel everything and I'm highly sensitive and feel other people's shit sometimes. And I didn't know how to manage that for a very long time. And so that's another story for another day. But once I learned how to really um, honor and, and protect that side of me, a lot of other things I was learning in my training about the mind, body, spirit connection really, really started to make sense for me. And, and also as I healed my own emotional eating struggles, this all started to come together for me. And I know there are a lot of people who really need structure, right? And they and they need an exact meal plan in something that they can follow every single day. And that's okay. I actually work with both types of people and I don't judge the choice. But when a client shows me that they're ready to try intuitive eating, that's actually when I start to introduce it. And I have yet to find one person that says, you know, Eva, I prefer the meal plans <laughs> because eating intuitively is actually really empowering. It can be daunting in the beginning because you do have to have a really high level of self-awareness in order to make it work. But it really is empowering and it's also easy. It's a lot easier than following a meal plan, in my opinion. So, you know, the free spirit in me is very resistant to rules and restrictions. Calorie counting and macro counting are fucking annoying. When I first learned about macro counting specifically, um, which was when I was getting my personal training certification, I remember thinking, this is why so many people struggle with weight loss, because this is what personal trainers are basically trained on. It's macro counting. That's the extent of the nutrition that personal trainers are trained on. I, I got my certification from NASM and I hear it's harder than the other ones. And that's really all they taught us was macro counting and calories in, calories out. And so I'm sitting here thinking, you want me to tell my clients to log into an app and to enter every single morsel of food that they ate? And before they even do that, you want me to tell them to weigh their food and do math and shit? I don't even want to do that. Like, don't get me wrong, I do agree that it's important to know what you're eating and to note how certain foods make you feel. Like, I'm not opposed to using something like my fitness pal to help you kind of gain an initial sense of awareness of what's going on on your plate, especially if you've never paid attention to these things. Like, it could be a really helpful tool. But you want to know something that I hear quite often from clients, something that a lot of people don't like to talk about? It's that. Counting calories makes people feel bad about themselves. It makes them feel shameful when they overeat or when they realize that they've eaten all of their allotted calories according to the app and it's only two o'clock in the afternoon. And shame, judgment, guilt are not going to support you in your weight loss journey, my friend. What they are going to do is they're going to sabotage the fuck out of you. So if you're prone to self-sabotage, 
which a lot of people aren't. Then tracking tools are probably not a good tool for you. They might be a good tool for others, right? But again, it's so individual, right? My approach to this is always bio-individuality, which is just every person is so different. So just because it works for your best friend or just because it works for, you know, this motherfucker over here doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And that also doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you because there's nothing wrong with you. You're just different. And I'm different. And we're all different. Right. So we can't just put this whole blanket of like, oh, do this, this, this and that. And it's going to work wonderfully because if that were the fucking case, no one would have weight issues. Right. If there was a, a formula that worked for everyone then we'd all be at our ideal weight wouldn't we but that's not the case right so i like to teach losing weight while loving yourself and while being kind to yourself in the process because that's how it becomes a lifestyle that's how you learn to have a healthy relationship with food and your body regardless of your size you don't have to hate yourself down the scale You can actually love yourself and still want to make changes. These two things can be true at the same time. So intuitive eating aligns wonderfully with my personal teachings on self-care, self-love, mindfulness. And the two psychologists that actually created intuitive eating, they actually call it a self-care eating framework that integrates instinct, emotion, and rational thought. Oh, love it. I love it. As soon as I read that, I was like, oh, I'm in. (laughs) Teach me so I can teach others. So it's a personal and it's a dynamic process. And it includes 10 principles, which I'm going to break down for you in a little bit. And the principles work in two ways. Number one, by helping you cultivate attunement to the physical sensations that arise from within your body to get both your biological and psychological needs met. And number two, by removing the obstacles and disruptors to that attunement, which usually come from the mind in the form of rules, beliefs, and thoughts. So intuitive eating definitely requires that you have a paradigm shift around dieting because most diet plans and most programs don't include the mind-body-spirit connection. So intuitive eating is sometimes called mindful eating because it forces you to be mindful, essentially. And it's really helpful as well for people that struggle with eating issues or with chronic dieting. Because again, it's taking you out of this mentality of I must follow these rules in order to succeed. And instead, you start to listen to yourself. You start to listen to your body's cues. You start to listen to your hunger signals and your fullness signals. Simply put, intuitive eating is eat when you're hungry and stop eating when you're full. That's basically it. Now, does that mean you get to eat pizza and ice cream all day? No, absolutely not. But when you learn to listen to your body and its signals, you actually learn how to calibrate yourself. I think this is the part that's really scary for people because people are like, if I can eat whatever I want, I'm going to go fucking ham and eat all types of shit all day long. No, you're not. No, you're not. It's a process, though. It's a mindset shift for sure, because a lot of it is unlearning behaviors. And it's unlearning these things that we've heard for years from the diet industry. But when you're listening to your body's cues, Your body doesn't want pizza and ice cream all day long. It really doesn't. After a while, if you eat too much of anything, you're not going to feel good. This is where the intuitive part comes in. Once you're really tapped in and you are attuned to your body, you're going to start to know and understand what foods make you feel good and what foods make you feel like shit and give you indigestion and give you gas and make you bloat it. And, and we don't want to purposely feel that shit, right? So then you're going to learn to make better food choices as you start to really learn and trust your body. So here are the 10 principles of intuitive eating. Number one is reject the diet mentality. 
because the diet culture has led so many people to feel like complete failures when their new diet stops working or when they fall off the wagon and then all of a sudden you gain all your weight back and you feel like shit. What that does to your mindset, what that does to your self-esteem is so damaging. And that's actually how they keep us on the hamster wheel, the diet industry, is because it's like, oh, we're going to come out with a new one. This is the new trend. This is the, the new diet for 2021 or whatever the case is. It's like, no, get off that hamster wheel and get in tune with what feels good for you. Again, it's a mindset shift. It's a huge mindset shift. So you have to get past the discomfort of unlearning the things that we've been programmed basically to think for so many years. Number two, honor your hunger. How do you do this? You do this by keeping your body biologically fed with adequate energy and carbohydrates. Otherwise, what happens is you trigger this primal drive to overeat. And that's what happens when you restrict yourself. A lot of these diets out here are so restrictive that you're fucking starving. You're not eating enough. And then your body's like, what's happening? And once you reach the moment of excessive hunger, all of your intentions of moderate, conscious eating are going to go out the window. And you're just going to binge. And you're just going to go and eat all the cookies in the cookie sleeve or all the potato chips or whatever it is, right? Because all of a sudden it's like, fuck it. I'm hungry as fuck. I got to eat. So by learning to honor the first biological signal that you're hungry it sets the stage for rebuilding trust in yourself and trust in food so again when you're hungry it's time to eat don't wait until you're starving to eat because then you're gonna overeat number three make peace with food stop fighting food stop giving it power food is not your friend food is not your enemy food is neutral It's just food. And food has one job, and that is to be our fuel. It's not a scary monster. It's not your reward system. It's just fucking food. And sometimes we give food so much headspace and so much control over our lives with all these rules that we want to place upon it and all of these um, responsibilities to make you feel a certain way. Food is food. It's not supposed to make you feel better or worse or comfort or love, (laughs) okay? That's a huge responsibility to put on food. And also, if you tell yourself that you can't or shouldn't have a particular food, listen, unless it's because your doctor says that you can't or shouldn't eat it, it can lead to these really intense feelings of deprivation. And what that does is it builds into these uncontrollable cravings and oftentimes binging. Number four, challenge the food police. Just because you eat a cookie or 10 doesn't make you a bad person. Just because you eat kale, that doesn't make you a good person. The food police mentality upholds these unreasonable rules that the diet culture has created. So in this case, the quote police station is really deep inside your psyche. And it's this mindset that leads you to feeling guilty or hopeless or fuck it, right? Case of the fuck it's is what I call it. If you fall off of your plan, instead of giving yourself grace, because we all fuck up sometimes. We all have moments of weakness. Doesn't make you a bad person. Doesn't mean you just say fuck it and just go back to whatever you were doing that wasn't working in the first place. You give yourself grace because you're a human and because you deserve it. Grace. Number five, discover the satisfaction factor. So oftentimes in our compulsion to comply with the diet culture, we overlook the pleasure and the satisfaction that can be found when you're eating. So part of this Finding pleasure in your food is actually slowing down so that you can actually enjoy your meals. And this also helps you to discover when you've had enough. Because the whole idea of intuitive eating is that you eat when you're hungry and you stop when you've had enough. 
Only you know what enough is for you, but it's definitely not stuffed. It's definitely not uncomfortably full. But if you're eating super fast, you don't know because you've bypassed. You've bypassed enough and all of a sudden it's like, oh shit, you realize, oh damn, I feel bloated now. I think I ate too much, probably because you ate too fast. So by understanding what enough is, you've had enough to eat. What you might learn is that it takes a lot less food than you would have thought you needed to reach that level versus if you just gulped down the entire meal in five minutes and you don't even remember what you ate because you ate it so fast. Number six then is to feel your fullness. So you wanna listen to your body's signals that tell you that you are no longer hungry. And you wanna observe the signs that show you that you are comfortably full. Comfortably full again means you've had enough. Not too much, not a whole lot, just enough. So you want to pause in the middle of eating and then you want to ask yourself, how does this food taste? Am I still hungry? Should I eat more or should I stop? And then that's how you can assess your current hunger levels, your current fullness levels. And there's a whole scale and all of this, and I won't get into the hunger scale in this episode, but again, it's just being mindful and slowing down while you eat so that A, you can enjoy what you're eating, but also B, you can be very much in tuned with what's going on inside your body while you're eating. Number seven, cope with your emotions with kindness. So find ways to comfort, nurture, distract, and resolve your issues without using food. And I'm going to do a whole series on self-care and self-awareness and all of that. So this is more so just like a precursor to that. But the bottom line is, I said it a little bit earlier, food is just food. And if you're placing all of these really unreasonable expectations and responsibilities on a food, to make you feel better, right? Because you're an emotional eater or you're a stress eater or, or, or however you may identify. It's, it's unfair. It's, a, it's, a, it's an unfair situation because food's job is only to fuel you. It is not to make you feel better. It is not to heal your broken heart. It is not to heal your unresolved traumas. It is not to de-stress you. That's what other tools are for. That's what mindfulness is for. That's what therapy is for. That's what doing the inner work, the soul work. Those are the tools that we use in order to truly heal. All food's going to do is make you feel worse once you're done. And I'll be doing episodes on emotional eating and, you know, I'll share more about my emotional eating journey and all of that. But I definitely just wanted to add that, you know, if you are an emotional eater, just know that learning how to cope with your emotions and really face them and really deal with them and really unpack them, that's going to be the way out of emotional eating and binge eating and overeating. That's how you get out of that cycle. Number eight, respect your body. So it's really hard to reject the diet mentality if you're unrealistic and overly critical of your body size or your shape. All bodies deserve love, dignity, and respect. Even if you don't like how you look in the mirror, even if you don't like how you look when you're naked, that doesn't make it okay to hate your body or yourself. That doesn't make it okay to abuse your body or yourself. In order to actually make changes, long-term forever changes in your body, in your physique, in your shape, in your health, You can't do it hating yourself. I always say this, you can't hate yourself down the scale because you'll lose the 20 pounds and you'll still hate yourself. It'll just look a little different, but you still will find things wrong with you until you learn how to love the body that you have. And one way to love yourself is by nourishing yourself properly. That is an amazing form of self-love. Eating the right foods eating the right foods for your body type, eating the foods that make you feel good, genuinely, not not ice cream makes me feel good because I'm stressed out. It's a difference. (laughs) It doesn't. It actually doesn't. But when you start to nourish your body with the right foods, you do start to feel better. 
And you do start to have a different type of appreciation for these foods that you may have been like, oh, I don't think I like that. I don't think I, I mean, for me personally, I didn't think I liked vegetables for a very long time. I was a very picky eater and I had the palate of a 10 year old. I want French fries. I want ice cream. I want pizza. I want platanos with everything. And I thought vegetables were nasty until I started to be more open minded. And then I realized, oh, shit. I actually do feel better after I eat a good salad. I actually do feel better when I have my green juice in the mornings. It does actually make me less inclined to crave other things if I am nourishing myself properly. You know, and again, I'll be doing episodes on self-love. Um, I'll be taking them from my previous podcasts and, and repurposing some of them because so, so, so important, right? But just know that regardless of how you feel about your body if you hate yourself if you're unkind to yourself you're going to struggle more than you need to number nine is movement so it doesn't matter what you do whether it's running walking dancing just make it a point to move your body every day and shift your focus to how it feels to move your body for example you feel more energized. Movement actually moves physically and literally moves the energy through your body. And if you have a lot of negative energy in your body, movement is the easiest way to get it out. So this is really helpful because on those days when you don't want to, you can remind yourself how you'll feel afterwards and why it's worth doing it. There are a lot of health coaches that I know that don't teach movement that don't uh, encourage their clients to work out. And I don't know why, um, but I do. <laughs> you want to lose weight? You got to move your body. You got to work out. You just do. Do you have to work out an hour a day? Absolutely not. But you do have to work out, even if it's just a walk. Movement is very important, not just for weight loss, but just for your overall well-being, just for your energy, for your energy levels, for your happiness for your nervous system to be to be balanced it's really really important to prioritize movement if that means you have to wake up a little bit earlier that's just what it means movement is important moving your body every day with intention don't just go through the motions you know don't just go on a lazy stroll to your mailbox and be like oh i moved today got my movement in no move your body with intention that's what i always say Number 10 is honor your health. What does that mean? You want to make food choices that honor your health and that make you feel good. Remember, you don't have to eat perfectly to be healthy. You won't suddenly get a nutrient deficiency, right? Or suddenly become unhealthy or suddenly fuck up your metabolism from one snack or one meal or one day of eating, quote, unhealthy. It's what you eat consistently over time. Now that is what affects your health. But one day, one meal, one snack, you have ice cream one day, you have cookies the next, does that mean you're, you're doomed forever? No, that's the diet mentality. It's all about progress, not perfection. I know we all hear this all the time. I sometimes get annoyed when people say progress, not perfection, because it feels like such a stupid cliche, but it's true. When it comes to weight loss, it is all about progress, not perfection. It is all about that 1% better every day. I'm not asking you to do 100% every day. It's 1%. Small changes, small habit changes, you know, little things that add up. That is sustainable weight loss. And also, you don't want to force yourself to eat things that you truly don't like just because you think it's healthy. That's another really important thing. And I'm glad that they cover this in intuitive eating because oftentimes, again, the diet mentality will make you believe that you must eat, I don't know, some shit that tastes like shit. Otherwise, you won't succeed. And you're like, fuck, I got to eat this nasty shit every day. How long are you really going to stick to that? Let's be realistic. I always encourage people to try new things. and. I always teach the crowding out method, which is something that I discussed in episode four. But the main point is to be open minded. 
when it comes to your food choices. That's the easiest way to make this work. Just be open-minded. You know what? I'll try it. Never tried it before. I've never tried it like that, you know, but I'll try it. Just keep an open mind. You'll, you'll surprise yourself. You really will. And as we wrap this up, I just wanted to share some interesting characteristics that studies have found in intuitive eaters. So studies show that intuitive eaters have a lower body mass index. So that's our BMI. They have lower levels of what's called internalized culturally thin ideals, which basically means intuitive eaters are less likely to have the belief that the only way to be healthy is to be skinny. Um, and that whole thing is a myth because I know quite a few very unhealthy skinny bitches. FYI. Intuitive eaters tend to not be emotional eaters. A lot of intuitive eaters used to be emotional eaters, but they have learned to trust their bodies and deal with their emotions without food and therefore less likely to be emotional eaters. Studies also show that intuitive eaters are less likely to suppress their thoughts, feelings, and needs, which again, why? Because intuitive eating teaches you how to really tap into your self-awareness. Intuitive eaters have higher levels of self-esteem, higher levels of well-being and optimism. They are known to eat a variety of foods, which we were just talking about. Intuitive eaters have higher levels of body appreciation and acceptance. Intuitive eaters have higher HDL, which is the good cholesterol. And intuitive eaters have higher unconditional self-regard and self-acceptance which is beautiful. I'll be doing an upcoming episode on self-awareness, which I'll be repurposing from my previous podcast, but it was a really popular episode because self-awareness really is one of the first steps to all of this, to any transformation, weight loss, health, life. Self-awareness is, is at the top of that list of things that we need to really hone in on and really learn how to tap into. Once you, once you become aware, everything else becomes a little bit easier. So in closing, intuitive eating is a journey. So if this is something that you want to do, I encourage you to give yourself a lot of grace in the beginning, because a lot of this is just going to be about relearning your body and unlearning the diet mentality that all of us have been exposed to. This is something that I love to teach and I love to coach because it aligns so well with my core values and my teaching pillars. But it does require a lot more self-reflection than your average diet plan. So it can be a struggle in the beginning for some. And that's just full transparency. But it's so worth it. It really is. So if you have any questions on this, feel free to submit them through the form in my show notes. And I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thanks so much for tuning in this week and trusting that none of this has to be complicated. At the end of the day, I want you to feel empowered to know that you can have the health, the body, and the life that you desire. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode and tag me on Instagram while listening at It's Eva Rodriguez so that I can support you along your journey. I'll talk to you next week.